Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Lord, we just want to ask the Lord to have his way in this service, Lord. Lord, we just thank you once again for your goodness towards us, Lord. We ask you to visit us once again, Lord, with your presence, Lord. Touch our hearts afresh. We'll give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's all stand this morning. I'm gonna dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. And His name is Jesus. And I'm born a winner. I'm more than victorious. Oh, free. 
for this week, uh, March 8th, uh, youth and uh, hyphen, hyphen uh, at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Friday, is that it? Yeah, we got a special time, okay. Uh, got my glasses here. March 16th, uh, 12 o'clock noon, ladies luncheon, uh, bring items to sell. Bring uh, bring some baked goods and stuff like that for the sell, and then uh, I'll leave the other announcements for later. <laughs> I can't read anything. I forgot my glasses. But uh, I like to read a scripture. It's found in Psalm 16. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. The song reader says. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. That's what we want to do today. We want to touch Jesus. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. Whatever we need, we can find in him. Amen. Just want to give him praise one more time. It's never 
Let's go ahead. Let's worship God. He's worthy of our praise. He's a holy God. He's a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't God good? God is so, so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's great to see everybody here this morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming out. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. I've been called upon a couple times four or five times to write an article for a monthly periodical out of the Maritimes. And I wrote my article yesterday talking about the 
day I was baptized in Jesus' name, that's right in my story, I began to worship God. I began to cry and thank God that 42 years ago, I was baptized in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stopped and worshiped. God, you've been so good. You've been running after me all the days of my life. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see you here. I greet you. Brother Merkel from Muskoka sent me a text this morning. He said, say hello to the folks in Windsor. Praise God. Praise God. Bye, Benton. Praise God. Well, God is so good. Thank you, guys. Tremendous job. Thank you. Praise God. I love that song. The last one he sung, somebody's chasing me or something's chasing me. Or, the goodness of God has chased me. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. I have a few people chase me, but I'm glad for the goodness of God. Praise God. And Brother Moss, I, I, I witnessed with him today. He was up here trying to read with the glasses. Praise God. My desks need my glasses more than I do, so they're sent upon my desk. But Romans chapter 6 and 11, praise God. Thank you for coming out tonight, this morning. Praise God. I'm so excited to be here. Brother Moss, can I borrow your glasses? <laughs> praise God. Romans 6 and 11. I love this screen. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's no no man's land. Thank you, Brother Moss. There's no no man's land. You're either in sin or you're serving God. Whoa. <laughs> Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield yourselves members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but ye yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet to sound to save. A wretch like me. Lord, we're thankful for your word. We pray you minister here today. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, before you're seated, shake two hands outside of your own and say, I'm glad to see you here today. Praise God. The New Living Translation, I think the New Living Translation of that scripture says this. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin. Consider this. Yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? I, I, I consider myself dead to sin. But we don't stop there. I also consider that I'm alive in Jesus Christ. I'm alive in Jesus Christ. We're alive in Jesus today. We're a lively bunch. We like to play our instruments. We like to lift our hands. We like to worship God. And I thank God for that. I thank God for music. And I thank God for, for uh, worship. And somebody asked me today, they said, does, does, your, does your church have, a, have like an orchestra? I said, we have a band. We have guitars and bass and drums and pianos and singers. And thank God for that. We fulfill Psalms 150. Your homework. Go home, read Psalms 150. We fulfill Psalms 150. It goes on to say, do not sin. Do not let sin control the way you live. And now, how do you do that? Do not give into the sinful denier, desires. Then it says, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead... Now, this is going to be a good message, folks. It's pretty heavy right now, and you think, oh, man, all he's going to talk about is my sin. It's, it's going to turn here in a few seconds, folks. And, and uh, we've turned our back on sin, and we turned our face toward God. Amen. We turned our back on the hopelessness of sin, and we've turned our face toward God, who is the author of hope. And thanks be to God, he is. 
Praise God. We've turned our backs on the darkness of this world, but we've also turned our face wholeheartedly toward the light that comes from him. Thank God for that. Don't let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves. Listen to this. This is your homework today. Give yourselves completely to God without reservation, without condition. Give yourself today. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Give yourself completely to God. When I was writing that article yesterday, I remember being baptized, and I didn't fully understand all what was going on because I was such a new, new convert, but I remember going to the water in obedience to be baptized in Jesus' name. December 5th, 1982, off the coast of Prince of the Round. It was a cold, overcast day. But I remember going out into the water in the ocean on December 5th and being baptized. And I remember coming up in the water feeling so good, so clean, so warm, and so, wow. So give yourselves completely to God. This is for every one of us here. Give yourself completely to God, myself included. Give myself completely to God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God. Just give your life to God when you consider his mercy. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, we were dead in sins, but now we have a new life. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. We have a new life. That's why we get excited when we come to church. That's why we worship, and that's why we get excited in our worship, because we have a brand new life. Praise God. So we use your body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. That includes every part of our body, our mind, our tongue, our hands, our feet. Every part of our body, we're now an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. Well, that, that should get you going there. Sin is no longer your master. You're no longer a servant to sin. You're no longer a subject to sin. But when you come to Jesus Christ, he severs that master-servant relationship, and then we call him Abba Father. He's our Lord. He's our God. For you have no longer lived under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live, you live under the freedom of God's grace. What does that mean, the freedom of God's grace? That does not mean we have the freedom to do what we want to do. That means we have freedom to do what he wants us to do, what he requires of us to do. We are free to fulfill the mandate and the purpose that God has designed each and every one of us for. That's freedom. Doing the will of God. Fulfilling the will of God is freedom. Walking with Jesus is freedom. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's a good life living for the Lord. It is a good life living for the Lord. It's so wonderful just knowing my reward. Every day, his precious love I can enjoy. It's a good life living for the Lord. When we come to Jesus, we are free. The title of this outstanding message this morning is simply surrendering to God. Surrendering to God. It's not a one-time occasion. It's a daily surrender to God. What do you want me to do today? Use me for your glory. Let this day be blessed of you. Let me be a blessing to somebody else. Let me be a source of encouragement. Let me bring light into a darkened situation. Let me bring the words of hope from the master into a hopeless situation. God, what do you want me to do? Help me to keep my body I'm subject to the moving of God's spirit in my life. Christianity is it's more than just a noun. It's more than just a, a religion. Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ, the only wise and true and living God. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Thank God for that. So it's surrender. When you surrender to God, you're under the freedom of God's grace. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. We're under the dispensation now of grace. Christianity is all about a fresh start. A new life. And I used to say a second chance, but I don't know about you, but God has given me a lot of chances. 
He left a second chance a long time ago, folks. God has been so long-suffering, so patient with me. He's given me so many chances, I can't count them. You fell on your face, get back up again, boy. You sin, get back up and stop sinning. Thank God for his grace. I love the scripture in the psalm. says, when, when my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, has held me up. I'm in the church today because of the mercy of God. We're in the church today because of the mercy of God. We're not here because we're a bunch of good two-shoes and we're better than the rest of the people. And, you know, too bad with them. But we're here by the grace of God. Amen. You are serving God by the grace of God. Amen. You have the ability to serve God because of his grace. Amen. He walks with you because of his grace. He lifts you up and he carries you because of his grace. I love the grace of God. I love the grace of God. How about you? I love God's grace. Praise God. If I was God dealing with me, I would have zapped me years ago. Close your eyes, Gabriel. Michael. Next. But God has been so good. He is a good, good father, isn't he? When we sing that song, I don't know about you, when we sang that song, he's been following me all the days of my life, whatever that song was, I can't remember words. What was it? Speak, what were those words? They're both singing two different lines of the song and trying maybe, your goodness has been after me, following me all the days of my life. I go back to my childhood as a kid when I didn't know him, but I see the hand of God. God had stopped me from doing some pretty stupid things. Unfortunately, I did some pretty stupid things. But God stopped me from doing a lot of stupid things. He preserved me. He preserved my life. I, I'm not supposed to be here. Folks, I caught myself in some deadly situations. But God said, oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. This kid's giving me a headache. Angels, go, go get him. Get him off that street. Wake him up and get him off that street. Cars going everywhere. Get him in that situation. His goodness, his goodness has been following each and every one of us all the days of our life. You got a reason to worship God today. I got a reason to worship God. I can stop service now, have myself a hoedown when I think about the goodness of God, when I think about the grace of God, when I think about the mercy of God, when I think about the love of God, when I think about that God has given me so many chances has forgiven me, has picked me up, cleaned me up, turned me around, embraced me when I should have had a good swift kick. But God embraced me, and I'm thankful for that. The message of Christianity is a message of hope. I don't know where we got this idea we're going to pre preach fire and hell and brimstone and dangle sinner, sinners over the pit of hell, hear them scream, and then cut the rope. Where'd that come from? He who was qualified to throw the first stone didn't throw the first stone when the lady was caught in adultery. And the Mosaic law says she's to be stoned. But Jesus said, you without sin cast the first stone. And they couldn't. From the eldest to the youngest, they walked away convicted. And he left that lady who was caught in adultery with Jesus. And I love what he said to her. Woman, where are your accusers? There's no one here to accuse me, Lord. What did Jesus say? Neither do I. Go and sin no more. But God, she deserved your wrath and judgment. Oh, mm. We're in a dispensation of grace. Grace reached over and forgave that woman. Restored that woman. Neither do I condemn thee. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Praise God. I feel like having myself a hoedown tonight. You know, I'm, I just feel like putting myself in beef or boogie. I'm so excited to be saved today. I'm still amazed that the presence of God, I'm still amazed that God saved me 42 years ago. I'm still amazed that God is, is he still loves me. After 42 year, years, he knows all about me. He goes, I still love that little guy. A little weird, but I love him. Talk's sort of funny, but you know what? He's not a bad little guy. And you and I come into his presence. We can lift our hands unto him who knows no sin, the Holy One. We can come in and worship him without condemnation, without guilt. We can't earn it. This is a gift from God that you and I come into his presence. 
You can't buy your way in. You can't earn your way in. It's just a gift from God. A gift from God. Praise God. I've been so blessed as you have been blessed so much to get gifts on your birthday and Christmas and Father's Day. And all those gifts I got over the years, not one of them had a price tag on them. Thank God for that. My wife doesn't give me gifts on my birthday and Father's Day and Christmas Day and said, oh, by the way, here's your bill. Love you, honey. No, she gives me these gifts without a, without a bill attached. You know what God's wanting to give you and I today? Salvation. And there's no bill attached. It's already paid for. He wants to give us forgiveness, redemption. He wants to give you and I the opportunity to serve him, to have a friendship with him, to have a relationship with him. And there's no receipt. There's no bill attached. It was purchased on Calvary's Hill. The ability, the ability for us to walk in holiness was purchased at the cross. The, the, the ability for you and I to walk in righteousness was purchased at the cross. The, 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 the ability of you and I to say, he's my savior today. That was purchased at the cross. For you and I have the ability to say, Abba, Father, that was purchased at the cross. For you and I to come into the sanctuary of the Lord and lift our hands and our frailty and our human, human, humanness, that was purchased at the cross. That was purchased at the cross. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's no condemnation being a Christian. There's no guilt being a Christian. Thank God we can get up in the morning and say, Lord, what a great day this is going to be. Because you brought me through the night. You brought me with hope. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. No matter where you were, God can reach for you and save you. That's the message of the church. Oh, he's too bad. Oh, she's too bad. You don't know the grace of God. The further they get, go down, God's grace and love goes beyond that. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. In the scale of God's righteousness, sin abound. But God's grace and mercy tilt the scales in our favor so we can gather here this morning and worship God and thank God for his grace to us today. What's the key to your victory? Now, we're, we've got these battles going on between our flesh and our, and our spirit. We, we want to pray. We don't want to pray. We want to fast. We don't want to fast. We want to witness. We don't want to witness. We want to walk with the Lord. We don't want to walk with the Lord. We've got this battle going on between us, between us and our, our flesh. Now, I just offend a few people saying, I don't have no temptations. I am so holy. Well, I think I will start right there. Self-righteousness is a sin unto God. I confess my need to the Lord every day. But you're a pastor. You're ordained. You guys don't have sin. Come to the district conference with me. You'll see some. Eh, praise God. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves. Here's your, here's your victory. Here's, you're here today. If you're fighting something, here's your victory today. You can be stubborn. It doesn't work. But if you do this, it works. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. When I submit myself to the authority of God in my life, when I submit and say, you are my Lord, my Savior, I submit to your will, I submit to your call, I submit to your purpose, I submit to your righteousness, and I submit to your salvation. Then look what happens. Now, don't get all freaked out over this and become a devil chaser. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. What does that mean, resist? Talk to the hand. The ear's not lifting. You see temptation? Walk the other way. Just resist, resist, just resist. Just say, nope. And the reason why Christians ought to resist is because you're not your own. You're God's property. GP, are you with me? God's property. You're God's property. So you submit to God, resist the devil, and the devil flees from you. He likes attention. He likes us to watch him, look at him, see he has the offer. But after you resist him a few times, he goes, oh, I'm going out of here. You're not listening to me no more. I can't entice them no more. He goes, takes his little bag of tricks, and leaves. Gets in the corner somewhere in hell, 
and puts his thumb in his mouth and has a pity party, invites all the demons and says to them, they're not listening to me. I can't, I, I, they just keep resisting. They don't listen to me. I put things in front of them and they just close, they're driving me berserk. And that's victory. The key to victory is secure when we submit or yield to God and his sovereignty. Even the devil will flee from a total submitted child of God. When you're totally submitted to God, the devil will flee. Remember the conversation in Job between God and the devil? And God said this to the devil. Have you considered my servant Job? You're picking on that guy and this guy and that guy and this guy. How about you pick on Job, a man of integrity, a man of principle? Some believe this is the oldest story in the Bible, the story of Job. Yeah, says the devil, I, I, I know Job and you've got a hedge about him. Remove that hedge and he'll curse you. The devil said, go at it. Don't take his life. And so he threw everything at Job, everything at Job. And Job said, Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. And all of the stuff that Job went through, he didn't sin nor accuse God falsely. He chose to worship. Oh, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Here's your victory today. No matter what you're going through, choose this day not to curse God foolishly, but to love him and praise him and say, I'm going to praise him in the storm. I'm going to praise him at the midnight hour. I'm going to praise him in the valley. I'm going to praise him in the time of temptation. I'm going to resist the devil by praising and worshiping God. I'm going to resist the devil. How did they make me look, by the way? Do I look smart? Ryman? He's preaching tonight and lied to me this morning. God is so gracious. <laughs> I couldn't see you. They're not far away, are they? I put them on. Poor little rhyme is a little blur. Praise God. We submit to God when we allow him to take total control of our lives. Write that down. That was good. We submit to God when we allow him to take total control of our lives. We come into his presence. I surrender. My life, I surrender my future. God, I want to be your property. I want to be your child. God, no longer my way, but your way. No longer my will, but your will be done. God, in my frailty, in my humanness, in my sinfulness, I surrender to the sovereignty of God. That's all it is, is surrender. Give it up. I heard a sermon years ago called The Joy of Surrender. There's joy in surrender. We think the opposite. Who here likes to lose at a game? I'm competitive. I'm, I'm competitive. Sister Promise, I don't like to lose. I want the gold. Silver is first place loser. I want the gold. So I get competitive. Getting a little, as you get older, you get less competitive because you can't do the things you used to do. So you just resolve to the fact that he's going to beat me. He's going to beat me bad. When we come to God, don't, don't resist the grace of God. Don't resist the mercy of God. Don't resist the love of God. It'll take your life and bless you, give you peace, give you joy. I was home one time and somebody asked me, hey, they call me Mark down home. Hey, Mark, how you doing? said, man, I'm so happy it should be illegal. God is so good, so merciful. Praise God. I got peace. How about you today? I got peace. Peace. I'm thankful for the peace of God that passes understanding. The goal that we're, we as every Christian, every Christian should be aiming for is simply this. Found in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. I'm almost done, folks. Don't order pizza yet. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? I like that. You know, that's, that's the question. It means what? Paul says, Church in Corinthians, say what? Pourquoi? Pourquoi? What? Know ye not 
Don't you guys already know this? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? Every Christian should be aiming at that place where you get to the place and you tell God, my life is not my own. You are the author and the finisher of my life. My life is in your hands to be used according to your glory and mercy. I want to be an instrument of God's grace and mercy. I want to be a vehicle of the love of God. We, every one of us should reach that place where, where it's just common sense that our body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's holy because of the Holy Ghost. We're righteous because of the Holy Ghost. Not, it's not something innate to humans. We're not born this way. We have to come to Jesus Christ. Read Psalms 51. David said, I was born in iniquity. We're born in iniquity. But through life, we can come to that place where we can submit to the will of God, the call of God, the gospel, apply the gospel, repent of our sins, be baptized in the wonderful name of the Jesus Christ, and then we're filled with the Holy Ghost. And then we become, through the Holy Ghost, a temple to God, a house for God. We don't live to our own. The Bible says, you're not your own. I'm not my own. If I was my own, I'd be retired. Living on $1,000 of GIC. But I'm not retired. Um, I got a retirement plan. And broke. But my life is not my own. So long as I have strength and breath, I'm yours, God. I'm surrendering to you today. I'm surrendering to you. I am so glad that you and I have the opportunity to surrender to God. The joy of surrender. We just bought a van and of a beautiful couple for our daughter and son and four grandkids when they come home in June. We have to go down and transfer the ownership. Beautiful people. They signed the ownership, gave that to us. We got it safety. We got it insured. Went down to the Ontario, Service Ontario, and got it registered. Now, those beautiful people that bought that we bought the van off, they can't come to us and say, um, can we have our van back now? Well, it's not yours. It's purchased. We paid you the money. We've got documentation enough. It's ours now. It's registered in my wife's name. Wow. Every Christian should reach that place where we have a moment of transfer of ownership to God. We're no longer our own. We're his. We're no longer our own pr property. We're God's property. We've transferred ownership. We surrendered. We took the documentation of repentance and went to the Lord and said, God, I give you my life. I'm totally surrendering. I'm transferring the ownership of my life, my future, my ambitions to you. Praise God. And I am so glad. I, I, I echo what Paul said. Paul said, I thank God having put me in the ministry. And today I stand before you. I thank God that God put me in the ministry. Called at nine years old. Thank God for that. Didn't get to know the Lord in fullness till 18, but he called me when I was nine years old. Thank God for that. I could have had different paths to go down, but the voice of the Spirit was always speaking to me. I called you at nine years old fulfill that call. I could have been a police officer. I could have been a school teacher. But God, the Spirit of God kept calling me. I called you at nine years old. I got a purpose for you. I got a will for you. I got a call on your life. And folks, I am so thankful that one of these days, a long way down the road, that I'm going to stand before the Lord and say, I did what you wanted me to do, God. There's no regrets in that. There's no regrets of transferring your ownership from yourself to God. I've never heard a Christian repent of being a Christian on their deathbed. But I've watched them worship as they slipped out of, out of temporal into eternity with their hands raised to God. Praise God. What a day that's going to be when our Jesus we shall see. Praise God. Praise God. So you're not your own. Therefore, we will not, we will become, we will become 
instruments of righteousness in Christ Jesus, we will become ambassadors of Christ. We will become the carriers of the holiness of God. But it all starts with this. Whom are we yielding ourselves to? Who are we submitting ourselves to? Who's in charge of our life today? Who's calling the shots? There's only one or two. Could be yourself or God. I'm thinking my ability to call the shots. And I'm, I'm going to delete it, disconnect it, throw it out. It will not dictate to me no more what I do. But I'm only going to hear and I'm going to tune in to the voice of God. What do you want me to do? Help me to do what, and God's got to help us to do what he wants us to do. You can't, you can't do this on your own. I can't do this on my own, folks. I didn't talk to I was five years old. I'm an introvert, 51%. Psychopath, 49, but 51% introvert, folks. I'm, my hands are sweating. But God helps me to fulfill his will. You might say this morning, I can't do anything for God. I, 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 don't worry. If God calls you to do something, he'll qualify you to do it. He will give you the ability. He will give you the strength. And I'm not bragging about myself, folks. I'm still working on me. Oh, I feel God. You know, I feel, I feel like, now you're going to think I'm weird. Please join the majority who know me. But I feel two loving hands here today. One on that side, one on this side trying to reach out to grab you and bring you into him. Say, I've got a will for you. I've got a purpose for you. You were born for a reason. You're not a mistake. You're not a has-been. You have been designed by God. We are created in the image of God. He designed each and every one of us. And these big hands are here this morning and saying, just, just, just come to me and, and see what I can do. Give me a chance. Give me a chance to change your life. Give me a chance to bless your life. And I'm not doing emotions and all that crazy stuff, folks. Those hands have led me for 42 years. There's unseen hands that I'm trusted to. To lead me through this old weary land. And some sweet day on that heavenly stand, I'm going to stand still embraced by those heavenly hands. I walk around with my grandkids, and my kids are smaller. And I take my little grandson, and I'll hold his hand and take him with me. And that little guy trusts me. He doesn't question me. Papa, you know where you're going? For one main reason, he can't talk yet. But he just trusts me. No questions. He knows that Papa's going to protect them. Trust God. Put your hand in God's hand this morning. Don't question them. Don't ask him, do you know what you're doing? But just trust him and say, God, you know what's best for me. You know what's best for me. And I'm trusting you. I'm talking about surrendering to God today. Let's all stand. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. They worked. They worked. Praise God. This is a non-judgment zone. This is an invitation to everybody in the church this morning. We want to come around in front and say, God, I need that hand in my hand today. An islander wrote a song many years ago. Put your hand in the man of the man of Galilee. Gene McClellan wrote that from Summerside PEI. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. And I invite you this morning, everybody, myself included, put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. He wants what's best for you. He wants what's best for you. Yeah.
Lord. You're great, Lord. You're wonderful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that day that he reached down his hands for us um, it, and uh, made himself real to us. He put his hand out there so for us to hang, grab onto his hand and guide us through, Lord. What a day, Lord. We're just thankful for all that you've done for us, Lord. You're so good, Lord. Your, your mercy endureth forever. We just give you praise for it tonight. Thank you once again. Bring us back again, Lord. And we can give you worship and praise one more time. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 